we're getting started here. How's your week been, Nat? Um, pretty good. Uh, I was supposed to start studying today, so I after this I will be studying. But um, it's been pretty good. I I went to buy an old person bed uh, on Saturday. What 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 do you mean by an old person bed? So you know those beds that like adjust to like get your uh, back, upper back up a little bit and then like brings your legs above your chest. Yeah, a reading bed. Yeah. We're not getting a reading bed, dude. <laughs> this is not for reading. Old person bed. It's the old ones you see bed. in therapist offices. Not those either. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a for serious bed. No, the goal is to uh we got this bed with the I with the uh intention to make sure that our sleeping habits get better. Because right now they're not great. Um I Do you can, have a TV. No, no TV in that in the room. That's I mean, that's a big one yeah. right there. You're no, already winning. We haven't had a TV in our room for like almost a year like you know what will ruin that was that when you discover that there is a mount for your ipad shut that you up can put by your no, bedside no, table I, I, that I, already we got. I already know about it and yeah, don't buy it's, it it's coming no it's not it's not, <laughs> it's not it's not it's not um no i've considered how to set up my books so that i can read them without putting my not without using my hands uh, oh god but um Eventually, the uh, the bed will come, and then I will give you guys like an image of me sleeping in z- in the zero g nice. position or something. But it's a great position. I'm stoked to not have uh, shoulder and neck pain because right now it's it really really is hard to turn right. Oh, did yeah. you like tweak it? Like, was there an inciting incident? No, I literally <laughs> laid down and went to bed. Woke up and I could not turn left. Sorry, right. Oh. Like even even now it's still kind of like stiff. I couldn't get past here yesterday. That's I can get here now, but it's still like twin. Like it's still like I feel a pull all the way in here. It's like I, it's like I pulled something and injured it. But like I didn't pull anything. I just went to sleep. Dude, that's that's the worst too. That's been like my whole week. I think last episode i talked to, about the all the judo tournaments mm-hmm. my uh my pinky on, and finger on one hand is still like double the size what of my other fuck? hand right Why? so like this one right here is like super swollen oh. uh i like can't push it back without it like making multiple clicking sounds it's uh Eric. it's swollen i've been icing it every day I can't. I can't stop, close it anymore. Stop! Stop! So, stop. like, that's Did as far as it goes. Did you go to a doctor? So I'm gonna go get X-rays this week. Okay. Um, I'm like, go to a fucking doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't so, be like me. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's broken, but uh-huh. it's definitely. It There's definitely hurts. Going on there. <laughs> um. <laughs> and then, of course, my my left knee. Is getting better every day, but it is still very uh, tight. Mm -hmm. So it's not as tender anymore. Oh, good. It it's it definitely it's going to take a while before I can stretch out the MCL side of it again and and Uh, open it up a little bit more. So be careful. Yeah, that's been my week too, man. Just sore old men uniting together. Guys, can I tell you the workout that I did on Saturday? that like, just ate me alive. So my trainer, incredible. Tommy Middleton, incredible. Look him up. He's fantastic. Um, kicked the shit out of me <laughs> like two weeks ago. And I was like, oh, maybe it'll feel better the next time because I'm terrified of this workout now. It's a full leg wor- workout. There's no other movements, right? So you do three sets of 15 at like 70%. So like that for me, that's 185. So I do three sets of 15 at 185. And then I do single leg deadlift with a kettlebell, uh, about 35 pounds for each leg. And then I do reverse lunges off of a 25 pound um, 
um, plate. And I do 15 each side. So that's supposed to be 30 total. And then what did I miss? No. Then I do uh, the horizontal leg press at 415. 415 for something for 15, uh, three sets of 15. And that's, and then Copenhagen's to go ahead and make sure my knees don't blow out on me. Yep. Got to get them all in. This has been the worst cycle of workouts I've ever been on in my entire life. I'm so sore, guys. It's so bad. No pain, no gain. I'm yeah. laughing because it's actually kind of terrifying how much like pain I'm in already. Like the day after, it's been it's better this time, but before, holy shit! Am I clipping? By the way, guys, no, no. no, no I'm no, just no. distracted okay, by how Eric murdered your name. Oh yeah, I, that was. Uh, wait that a was second, me. I didn't that do was it. Me. That was what? me. That was that was Nat. Nat did that. <laughs> Nat, okay. I, I, yeah, I, I did this. Anthony immediately like terrible name, Eric's fault. This Nat Emmaus. How could that's, he? That's true. That's true. Well, I thought you said Nat Emmaus earlier, like no. anime Nat Emmaus. I didn't no. hear the the no. ending. Wait, like just Nat Emmaus? Hold on. Yeah, that's what I, like, I thought. You said Nat Emmaus, so like then I that. thought Eric was trying to play a goof on you. I think just the uh, or the is e, it, or right? is it like just true the e. true Japanese Nat-a-may. fashion Nat <laughs> Yeah. You need the umlau though, because oh, everyone's just gonna see na time, na time, what? na time. Oh god! Is the, no, that's not it. <laughs> the, <laughs> what is the button? You, I you have to do it in hiragana or katakana. I have a sixty-five uh, percent, so like it's all jacked up. Oh, geez. which one is it? Fudge! I don't know. Oh. Okay, whatever. Mm. I'll figure alt it out later. Plus one thirty-six. Uh, alt one three six. I don't know what key code that is to be fair dude why would you tell me that what if it's like <laughs> oh, one three six nope nothing uh, okay i'll figure it out later guys so anthony how's your how's your week been i don't remember what? bro <laughs> bro <laughs> what do you mean you don't remember uh it's been a blur man like what i've been working it's because of what i'm working on um So I'm like a very visual person and like the, the less visual my work, the more my brain just like shuts off. Just like everything blurs together. Yes. So like what I'm working on right now is just like an insane amount of like, I I need a whiteboard. I need to start using a whiteboard. It'd probably, there's literally a whiteboard right here. You really should. Um, so maybe that would help or something. But the, the thing is, is that it's there's too much stuff for just a whiteboard. So I have to like you have to, like have to do something wall. different. Yeah, uh, but it's like all text. It's like it's like l- l- the Matrix where you're only looking at the numbers. Have you considered Figma? No visual stuff. I don't Figma. know what that is. What is Fig- Figma? Is like a graphic design uh, app mm-hmm. that's really uh, popular again with UX and um, graphic design creators mm. my uncle wants me to sign up for figma so that he can get a educator's discount for it for <laughs> his work oh cool but um <laughs> it's basically what um i think it's what google put all their money into instead of um instead of keeping what was it it was some kind of team based um whiteboard that you could add sticky notes to whatever either way mm-hmm. this is like their their brainchild that they're like putting money into for um just whiteboarding stuff okay That's okay cool. i'm gonna i'm gonna be real though everything on this page i, I looked up figma jamboard That's gorgeous yeah. gorgeous looks good wonderful everything and then i mouse over the uh-huh. header buttons uh-huh. with the buttons uh-huh. and their hover pointer is this mickey mouse Fucking glove, and it looks ridiculous. <laughs> from from a design company. Look, man, I didn't. I didn't say that I was the. I was using it. I mean, I think Obsidian's probably a better uh, bet for Anthony, just for the um, well, canvas uh, functionality. Yeah, but I I think 
the the problem with whiteboarding and anthony may think about it differently than i do is that oftentimes it's it's to visualize my current thought process it is not something that i need to save long term mm -hmm. oftentimes mm -hmm. like sometimes that's helpful like sometimes there are design docs and like visual representations that i flesh out that yeah. will help in the future uh -huh. but sometimes i just like need to pull out scratch paper so i can organize my thoughts visually mm. which can help me work through problems and oftentimes a scratch piece of paper or something that isn't big enough to contain all of those thoughts at once is the problem. So like a whiteboard helps or like a giant chalkboard helps me in some cases like that because I can literally put everything I'm trying to think about in that moment up onto the board at once in one visual representation rather than some digital apps where you have to move stuff around, you can't see everything at once, it's... It's usually clunky or difficult to have everything mm. kind of visually represented easily in a concise form when yeah. all I'm doing is like mind dumping into visual form. Mm. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is that your rebuttal to utilizing digital is that it can sometimes get in the way of the actual flow of putting your thoughts onto a medium. A hundred percent. I think, you. Uh, especially for, and here's a great corollary to that Photoshop oh, and an artist, right? There yeah. are plenty of people who work on art and do art and have trouble converting and moving over to a digital platform because of how visceral and easy it often is to be, just do it, to own. just do it yeah. on a canvas or a piece of paper because you're working with all the things that you have right there in front of you. And that goes away. Though. What was that? I don't think that's a fair comparison, though. Not comparing uh, it to the direct problem that I'm doing. Okay, just okay. as a corollary to how okay. they talk a lot in the art space about how quickly one can go from an idea to being able to bring to life that idea and the more barriers or hoops you have to jump through to get into the flow state of getting that represented. The less content you can even develop. Off, yeah. Oftentimes yeah. pushes people out of that space. Like yeah. a lot of people don't like doing digital art on Photoshop or on a computer because they can't just pull it out and start drawing. That's one of the things that I think the iPad is probably the best thing for design ever built. Because yeah. regardless of what Easy you think about use, Apple, regardless of what you think about like their processes, there is absolutely no argument that the iPad is the best device to be able to go, I want to draw something right now, or I want to create art I need to right write now. Down. I need to do a note. I need to do something right yeah. now. Yeah. And I click, it opens yes. automatically because it has your face. And, and then I pull the pin off of it. Procreate can be on my, my, I can make Procreate the size of half the screen as a button. And I can click half the screen and Procreate is ready to go. Open barely mm. any load time on the iPad. It's super... Light streamlined fast. yeah yeah and now i'm creating art right then and there with a thing that feels super super nice if you have like the paper finish and the, mm -hmm. the nice pen i think i like, do think the barrier is still there in terms of like selecting brushes making sure that your loadouts are all good but agreed, i will say that it's procreate a lot is, faster yeah, than and procreate's getting closer have. and closer and closer to like bridging that gap so that Pressing the right buttons in Procreate is so minimal and so minimalistic and so easy to do that it is sometimes easier than going over to my left drawer over there, pulling out finding a, the right Rebo pencils whatever. or pens yeah. that I want from that drawer, organizing them, pulling them out, and being ready to go. Procreate is bridging that gap better than any other software in the market, in my opinion, for yeah. sure. Anthony, what are you going to do with, the, with these ideas, dude? What are you, where, are you, where are you going? What are you going to do with this? Well, the funny thing is six years ago, I used Jamboards in real life <laughs> at an old 
old company that had all, way too much money to spend on things. So there's like a giant digital whiteboard and you could like add multiple whiteboard pages. So it was kind of neat, but also janky at the time. Yep. Still was. Um, still was. But, Sorry, past tense. Yeah. But like, no, for me, uh, what I need is to create a map of what I'm working on. Cause it's like the thing is so big that I need a map to traverse when I'm like far down the road and something comes up from before and you have to like go back and look at it. But I've spent like, I don't know why, but I always just, I don't use a whiteboard for my thoughts. Like I got in trouble when I was in school for not like Drawing writing. Mm-hmm. Well, no, for like in like math, like not, showing my work they'd be like you cheated i'm like no i didn't they're like then how did you do this i'm like what do you mean how did i do it like how did you figure it out i'm like you do the math what do you mean like well you didn't show me you do it i'm like i did it in my head and they're like bullshit you cheated i'm like i'm sorry what (laughs) this i'm sorry anthony the education system was not built for you and i (laughs) no it's like i I mean i wonder if it was like maybe the teacher was one of those people that can't no. have an inner monologue no, and can Anthony, only have like an outer monologue Anthony, or something I'm telling you right now. That is how we are taught to teach from yeah. top, from top down. You were taught. That's great that they can find the answer, but if they can't vocalize, if they can't speak to the answer and explain how they got to it, then it's not a, it's not a full demonstration of learning. That's I, so weird. By the way, just because Anthony brings that up and I think it'd be, an interesting topic because I, I think I know Anthony because I, I think we've talked about it previously. But Nat, do you how does your inner monologue work? Like when you visualize your thoughts or think about your thoughts or think about things, do you talk to yourself in your head? Do you have an inner voice? I have do you an inner have voice. an inner. Some people yeah. see pictures or visually think about things in their head. Like where on the spectrum of that are you? <laughs> So um, when I'm being when I'm not being creative, it's a voice, um. and oftentimes I don't really speak to it. I think like we kind of speak in tandem, strangely okay. enough. Um, and sometimes that can be good. Sometimes that can be bad, <laughs> especially <laughs> with some of the self talk that I that I sometimes do. Um, so separating like the inner monologue from my actual like mental narrative of who i am is something that i need to go ahead and work on but i will say that my inner monologue is a conversation when i'm being analytical and when i'm being creative is more image based like it won't give me it won't give me words all the time but i can play a scene in my head based on like a like a an idea that I have. Like if I'm thinking of, I don't know, any form of creative activity, it's mostly fantasy driven. So like if I'm brain, if I'm uh, daydreaming about, I don't know, Miyazaki films, but like in a dark, with a darker cut and I don't know, samurais in space, whatever I can put myself in that situation and see it almost as if it was a movie in that medium. It's pretty cool, but at the same time, like it comes in like it comes in spurts. Like it'll go like, "Oh, that's cool," and I'm like, uh, 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 it. <laughs> <laughs> "But yeah, um, uh, music kind of operates the same way." I'll get like flashes. I feel like every every musician gets this, where like they'll get a tune that'll like run through their head, and it'll be there for like five seconds, and if you don't grab it, it's fucking gone. Yeah. Um, and I've but I've gotten really bad at being able to like grab those things and put it to like an idea, or, like grab a guitar and go. But like, it's something I want to do eventually. Um, yeah. One of my uh, teachers when I was at music school, he he gave me the idea of always, and he said phones kind of solve this now. But he still just because it's easier. He always carries a handheld recorder with him and oh. keeps it in his pocket on his keychain. 
smart whenever he's out whenever he's out and about or anything like that and he thinks or has that moment where a melody or a rhythm or something comes to him he'll just hold the record button do the rhythm or melody into the recorder and then be like yeah, yeah. and then i'm <laughs> something like this 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 and then he'll go in and he'll just stop it and what he'll do is once a week or something like that he will have forgotten everything that's on there He'll mm-hmm. go and take everything that he had on there. He'll put it into um, uh, his favorite DAW. And then he'll go through and flesh out some of the ideas. And he blocks off a four-hour block every weekend where he'll just go through all of his ideas that he randomly had during the week. That's a good idea. I should yeah. probably do that. And I think he, I would get more self-conscious about like being at my desk and going, do 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 But yeah, I'll just go, he would, I'll find my little like doodle noise. Oh, he would do, I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. He would do it all the time during classes. Like he'd think of stuff and he was just super nonchalant. And because it was a one button press, he said for him, it was so important that it be so minimal, no barrier to entry. Mm, He's yeah. like, Take it out. I'm holding the button and it's recording. Done. And I go. Yeah. Right. There's and he's like, I don't have to that. open an app. Yeah. I don't have to do anything. He's like, there is no barrier to entry. I can be walking down the street. And as long as my keys are with me, which I always keep in my pocket anyways, I can do this. I'm grabbing them and I'm recording. Right. Guys, that was great. What are we drinking? Okay, so we are <laughs> continuing our journey down the rabbit hole that is the Flaviar Advent Calendar, which has been an interesting ride so far. I think mm. we're about halfway done with the Flaviar Calendar. Yep. Um, I think officially this episode will put us past the, the halfway point. We'll be covering 11, 12, and 13. Mm. And... We have some interesting t- ones today. We have. Yes, we do. S- starting off, <laughs> we have an Irish whiskey. Silky. Which, always one of my favorites. I love Irish whiskeys. That is the Silky, the legendary dark Silky Irish whiskey. Now, then we will move on to a rye. But the caveat of this one being that it is a cherry wood smoked rye. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then we will finish with a barley single malt scotch whiskey. So three very different whiskeys. Two one rise. should bring us okay. those shortbread baking cookie notes. One should get us that that harsh rye sourness, sour bread type of deal. And then finishing up, we should get smoky, peaty, barley Sweetie. goodness. Mm-hmm. Okay. So first off, is silky. Um, is it silky or silky? Uh, silk. Silky. So I will. I will have to look it up. I I have been saying silky, but because this is Irish, an Mercedes. Irish whiskey. Mercedes. Mercedes. You'll see that stupid bit. <laughs> I no, just no. saw it for the first time. No. Where there's like this girl ASMR ASMR ing and like tapping on like a luxury t- truck or something. Oh, she, I have goes, seen that. I hate it. It is. And then <sighs> some dude just goes and like hammers it or like scratches it up with a crowbar oh and goes, God. Mercedes. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Jeep. I hate it. I hate it's it so much. So weird. I hated that commercial when I first saw it and I was like, this is some. It bullshit. was a commercial? Oh my I think God. it was a commercial. I don't know. This, okay, this is peaty. so. I I do get like a funk here, which is very there's interesting. A, mm-hmm. Oh my God! There's like, like a funkiness that is um, different. Thirteen has what I was looking for the other day, bro. You should open I, thirteen. You gotta open that one at a time. God dang! What? <laughs> oh wow, that thirteen is very interesting. Um, That's not what they man, do. What the, you gotta do? <laughs> That's not what they do at the tastings. That's not what they do at the tastings. Throw it away. <laughs> so, let's look up this. 
uh, what I was looking for the other day was like something white doggy, m- very mashy. Just oh, like okay. Something oh, so that's you're on saying, the nose. So you're now you're spoiling it. I see. Okay, cool, cool. No, like it's fine. Everybody wants their olfactory experience, but you oh guys go. Gosh. You guys go ahead. You guys just go ahead and sniff oh stuff. Gosh. It's fine. It's fine. I'm cool. It's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. So the peat on this. <laughs> so this is actually, funnily enough, this is peated. This is a peated Irish whiskey, it seems like. Yeah. This is Very good. Peated. I mean, like, so I, I've i liked peat. Like, I like the smell of peat. But honestly, the taste of it is often, like, if it's not, man, how do I word this without sounding like an absolute soft boy? Eh, whatever. Um, I don't want it to hurt. <laughs> I don't want to taste the peat and have it hurt. Like I feel like there's a way to have peat and not have the taste of it be like a punch or offensive. There's. I feel like it should be smooth. The way I smell it, I'm like, okay, you could get there, right? Ah, this this nice I've had smoky. It, it almost tastes like you took a. Uh, You've already tasted it. Like a cookie. I haven't tasted it. Okay, Sorry. Okay. The, the, the nose <laughs> gives me this hint of a kind of this shortbread cookie mm-hmm. that's not too sweet. It's more buttery, smoked in peat. Like, essentially, you took a smoking glass, you put it you over, put it a, over cookie, a cookie, yeah, and then you smelled that cookie. I would eat this cookie. I feel like we should eat this cookie. Yeah. Anthony, we got to eat the cookie. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. find my booklet. Uh, I found it, though. Excellent. Well, cheers to episode 26. We are past our quarter century mark now. Every mm. time. 26 wow. is half a deck of cards there. So, it is. That's that's why it's special. And okay, wow. I want to read out their tasting uh, notes yeah, yeah, real yeah, quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because this is very interesting. So, wow, they t- say that we should be getting apple, tobacco, mm-hmm. peat, mm-hmm. oak, mm-hmm. spice, spicy, spicy with caramel, a <laughs> smoky, dark chocolate. And brine. And this booklet right here, and the reason I wanted to read it out, this is the one that has been most accurate to my experience, full stop, in the entire booklet. I think that I get almost every single one of these clearly. I don't get. In this whiskey. Maybe I just don't know what brine tastes like. Fishy. Salt water. Yeah. Oh, Salty, yeah. fishy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I don't get the. Uh, well, no. Hold on. Let me breathe. No, it's definitely there. Okay. Yeah. I'm very impressed with this. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to say it straight up. This is probably the best Irish whiskey I've ever had. Wow. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's because of the smoothness. It's very interesting. This is a very interesting Irish whiskey. Very much so. The the smoking it with peat has really evolved the flavor of what is usually very one note for a lot of the especially lower price point Irish whiskeys where it's kind of got this funkiness and this sweet shortbread flavor. This evolves into this very heavy apple forward punch that Mm -hmm. is a little bit spicy tobacco notes right up front. I get, um, you know, a guy sitting on an apple orchard farmhouse smoking a cigarette out on the front porch, right? And then it has this middle section where I get these smooth caramel woody dark chocolate notes and then it finishes with this nice tasty woody uh spicy cinnamon note at the end that is very dynamic this is a very dynamic whiskey i'm a fan 
Yeah, so this did take silver at the 2021 World Whiskies Awards. Really? Um, it also has a gold, a gold at the World Spirits Competition. So this is no, this is done higher. by. I am going to butcher this name. You want to spell it so I can say it for you. S L I A B H L I A G. No, 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 you're gonna have to type in. <laughs> no, no, don't you do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I am just going to butcher this. If we ever no, have somebody from Ireland watch, I don't want, I don't want to have to, I don't want this to be messed up because these, this is good. So I need you to just type this into the live yep. chat. Let me know what it I is so you. I can try. <laughs> I got you. I sent it. I sent it here. Um, funnily oh. enough, this is really cool. <laughs> So I just noticed that typing into the live chat in Riverside automatically sends that to both YouTube and Twitch. So our YouTube and Twitch audience also get the get the site for the distillery, which is really cool. Sliab 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 Yeah, I, I was playing with that last time. Sliab I, I couldn't tell if it was working or not for me. Huh. Here. Pro it now. looks like it does not work for you. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. called Sleeve League. Sleeve League. Sleeve League. Sleeve and League. So the sleeve, this is done by the Sleeve League Distillery. And, and they are all about the distilling heritage of Donegal. And, and this is a very dynamic and cool whiskey this to is cool. start off with. Very huh. apple huh. forward, but very nice. Okay, was okay. not ex was not envisioning the smoke to be over an apple. Yeah, a peated Irish whiskey. Very Did not see that coming. Very cool. Okay. I, I am excited to see where that how that evolves as we try some of these other whiskey. So I, I took too much from you. Know what is really cool What's that, that these two the the eleven and twelve do have this nice theme of being smoked whiskeys that generally aren't smoked. So this is a smoked, a cherry wood smoked rye. Mm. Ooh, and I get like chocolate on the nose, like heavy chocolate and raisins, almost prune. I'm getting raisin, dude. I'm getting confectionery. Uh, yeah, it has raisin. like a confectionery, you know, the, um, mm -hmm. the raisins with the girl in the front that have like the circle around her. Mm -hmm. Like something Ann or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. They're what saying vanilla are? off the top. Do you get that? I, uh, uh, the raisins are really getting me. I can't get that vanilla. I'm guessing it's like sun made like raisins. Sun made. There he goes. What is oh, that, Anthony? Coffee? It smells more like apricot to me. I could see apricots too. See it's apricots. got this dried fruit, like mm -hmm. subtle dark fruit however you know what this smells like There's to me wood under more there. so than anything like the combination together really i reminisce of raisin bran cereal oh yeah like a meal yeah -esque, like yep. raisin flavor yep okay because it has some of those creamy milky notes it has some of the like i used to have raisin bran all the time when i was a kid and this just hits like raisin bran does. So I'm gonna is that um, is that woodsy smell uh, allspice? You know, I couldn't stand raisin bran because of the raisins would get stuck in my teeth while I was chewing. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. This is a very sweet whiskey. Yo, that aftertaste. Wow. The aftertaste has a nice burn to it. No, no, no. Wait for the burn to go. Huh? <laughs> Nikov. <laughs> Wait, is Nikov, Nikov in chat? Nikov's in my chat. What's up, man? He's like, y'all some cultivated gentlemen. <laughs> okay. Like a sir. <laughs> sir. sir. Pinky's out. Pinky's okay, out for the Nikov. So that aftertaste is super raisin. Like. Yeah. I, I do. The raisin bit goes all the way through the flavor. It pulls through 
the entire flavor profile here. I guess the sure. raisin is the apricot because they don't say raisin, right? Oh, they say apricot. I they nailed do say it. Apricot. You like do say Anthony's it. You do on say the apricot. nose. I think Dude, this Anthony. is more on the apricot guys, note. Guys, my nose level is Dude, increasing. You're, 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 you're <laughs> it's like level yourself, five sir. now out of 99. <laughs> Good for you, man. I'm proud of you. It's all about progress, guys. Move that. Oh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I get a little bit of the spice. I get some of the cherries. I do mm-hmm. get this all spice on the on the mouth for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, ironically enough, I think walnuts fall from my tree. Walnuts are walnuts in this. They, they do. Are. They say that there is some walnut. It does have a nuttiness to it, but I get it in the. Hmm. You know how your mouth after some whiskeys kind of salivates. And yeah, leaves behind very much like this kind of a taste. Mm-hmm. Your saliva kind of gets a taste to it. Yeah, that salivation has a nutty flavor to me after drinking this whiskey. Yeah, yeah, which I, I, I can, can imagine that. that's where they get the walnut. Is it flavor walnut? From. I smell yeah, it. I, I mean, that. it smells a little nutty to me, too. I could see that. I, I, I think for me, smell the nut, Anthony. I can smell that nut. Ooh. cultivated <laughs> gentleman right here uh Ooh. i think for me the problem is that the nose still just screams raisin brand so i'm getting this oatmeal kind of mealish creamy vanilla mixed with raisin note that just it, like over is it's overpowering my brain and just saying you remember raisin bran as a kid because that's what this shit is now that I've like sampled it a few times, I'm definitely getting the vanilla now. Like it was yeah. buried under the raisin, and now I'm like, oh, of course it's there. Now, now I get it. Like it's like you put too much cereal into your milk, and now it's super saturated with your uh, cereal. Now, I now it's super, super powerful. Hundred percent. I think this whiskey. Oh, man, I couldn't make the joke that I was gonna make. Mm-mm. <laughs> Mm-mm. 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 Uh. I was going to say, you know, if you're still at the age where you like cereal, this is this is it right here, bro. You can cereal like in a cereal bottle for your entire life. Shut up. I was going to yep. say, I eat cereal last night after, for dinner and this morning for breakfast. Uh, Get out of here. Wait, 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 wait. You should never have it two times in a row, my guy. I had to, man. I, well, I, I had like a, a late lunch at like 3.30. You know, one of the craziest things I was I watching. I barely got hungry. <laughs> reviews. Oh, for Magic Spoon recently. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if y'all tried Magic Spoon. Great and terrible. I have. I love Magic Spoon. You have a phenomenal product. (laughs) Even better product if you sponsor us. But (laughs) you have a phenomenal product. Uh, But your boxes are one bowl. Let me me just clear that up for you. Your boxes (laughs) equal one bowl. Your boxes are like 11 or $12. And guess what? That bowl, peak cereal. Peak. Real good. Real good. Peak. 10 you know, out of 10 you know that, cereal. You know what their serving size reminds me of? Going to the cafeteria at school and getting, Go getting those little growing cartons. Dude. Getting those little Not, cartons yeah. of cereal where like you yeah. take off the lid and they're like, oh yeah, you put your milk mm-hmm. that you get from the line in it. And I'm like, you mean like you want me to overflow the milk and drink it like a soup? Because this is a soup now. It's Mostly now. liquid. No cereal. <laughs> but yeah, they say however many serving sizes are in one box of Magic Spoon. Nah. This they say like five, there's six? about five servings no. in a box. There's like I can tell bowl, you right bowls, now, max. Magic Spoon. No, 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 no. It is one <laughs> bowl. I take a, when, it, though. when I get two. Magic Spoon... I take the box, I open it, and I pour the bag into a ball. Magic spoon. I don't look, I am not complaining about price point. I am not complaining about taste. I am complaining purely about give me a bigger box size, please. Like, please. You'll I, pay for I don't it. you'll pay for I it. I don't care if it makes me look the like size I'm one. an overweight American. Like, give me the American size, please. I beg of you. 
it makes you feel like the owners are European or something. They're like this is a good size for the, <laughs> how you say to feed your house of three. You know, <laughs> you yeah. could, you, mom can have one, dad can have one, Timmy could have one. <laughs> I can I can snack on a single box no. of Magic Spoon. I've had Magic Spoon a few times. I had a subscription for a bit, and then I canceled it because I was like, I can't keep eating this many carbs. Um, oh, it's so good, though. It's so good. And they say that there's protein forward. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. But at the same time, like, let's look at your macros and also take, in, take into account everything else. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? I've had it before. Gums up my teeth as well, so I stay away from yeah. it. Yeah, because it kind yeah, of like, it also like yeah. it, it messed me up a little bit, so I had to get rid of it. The best thing that came out of my experience with the Magic Spoon, though, was the free bowl and the free spoons. Those <laughs> things are awesome, and I still use those. I've Gentlemen. since switched to uh, Kashi. Kashi. Kashi has like okay. ten grams per serving cereal. I did the math the other day. My bowl of cereal in the morning is like. 37 grams of protein. <laughs> 30 set. Dude, that's way too With much. With the cashew protein. That's not. Cashy? I don't know Matt, how good your cereal is. I need like 200 yet. grams a day. Uh, dude, I 200 know. Grams, yeah. I need 260. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say, but that's the biggest one of us. I'm the largest guy in on this podcast, and I know what ca- caloric intake <laughs> looks like well, so why are you surprised like 37 it, grams is nothing because it's not supposed to be coming from a synthesized source like that i like mean like protein. it's i mean like it's whey protein which is like it's fine it's it's more so like you want to eat real food as much as possible especially if you're taking in that much protein yeah yeah, yeah. it's more so when uh i'm too busy to cook because yeah usually i would try to make like uh Sometimes I try to bulk make breakfast burrito stuff, oh, and God. then and it all if falls I can't... to shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it all, yeah, it all falls apart. I get midway through the week and I put that thing in a microwave, and it's like, this is not a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> so a... many times I put way too much in my burrito, and then I have to heat up another tortilla and make a double. Oh, dude, it that's not a, that's not roll. a problem there, dude. That's a, <laughs> that's not great. A <laughs> oh man! But what you were saying? I'm sorry, I interrupted. Oh, like the other thing I make is if I actually have the time, is I'll make a egg sandwich, which is always good. Mm, yeah, yeah. I need to get better at cooking um, breakfast as well because I definitely fell short of my protein goal today, and it was the first day of reporting to my trainer, and he's probably going to be like, "What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, what? How are you alive?" I do so, the the same breakfast every morning. So same. good, I love what it. What is what is it, Eric? I do. Why tell us your your breakfast before we try number thirteen. So I do I do a bagel. Then on top of that bagel, I spread a healthy amount of Braunschweiger, which is cured pig liver. It's Gross. liverwurst. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's different than liverwurst because liver. Uh, I don't believe liverwurst is cured. I you think Braunschweiger is cured. You, dude. It's, it's, it's cool, Eric. You're but okay. it is it is the same thing, <laughs> essentially. Spreadable as far as meat. Know. Yeah, spreadable, spreadable meat. meat. Uh-huh. And then you take cream cheese, yeah. dab it on top, yeah. and it is essentially 33% carb, <laughs> protein, fats, like down the line. Down the line, man. Because I just 30, 30. even it out, and it is... That's my mom used to make it as a comfort food when I was growing up, so I love it. And uh, then I just, I, it's super easy. It's super healthy? affordable. It's not the worst thing you could eat. Uh, okay. other people could argue that, like, you know, Salt so might be pretty high. bread content's pretty high. You should. I should probably get a healthier brand of bagels than the ones I use. But blasphemy. You know. <laughs> so it like it tastes really good because I've had it many a time thanks to Eric, uh-huh. and whenever he like visits, I end up buying it, and so that it's here for him, and I start eating it, and then as he leaves, I keep eating it, and then I always forget that I get gout eventually from eating oh, too much no. of it, which is apparently a big thing when you eat too much like liver basically, yeah, uh, and then I cut good it out. 
I stop eating it until I forget. And repeat good the process. to know. Good to As know. It is, it is so good. I Eric, have how are been you avoiding fortunate. gout? <laughs> I don't know. I've never had the problem. I do know of that problem. It is more or less, a, you know, it's it's all different for everybody. So everybody yeah. have different tolerances. Yeah, yeah. So that makes sense. Well, there's like different bodies produce the right things to yeah. break down certain things. And like mine doesn't produce the right things to break down certain things yeah. well by itself. It could you also to, be like, a supplement. learned response for me, too, because I've been I, I've been eating that meal since I was yeah four or five years You've old. You've been trained. Yeah. Born by it. Raised yeah. in it. Raised. <laughs> Raised in it. <laughs> it wasn't until I was it wasn't until I was a, bo- a man that I had a taste of a pancake. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Anyway, nearby. 13. 13. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Anthony. What were you saying? I'm sorry. They serve pancake and p- pancakes and chicken. Oh, man, so not so good. chicken and pancakes instead of chicken and waffles, chicken and pancakes. I was like, what? Chicken and pancakes, man. So, yeah, I have a smell on that note, too, Very that sweet. I am getting from this. I am getting this umami, almost meatiness, almost like candied bacon, kind of like a, a sweet, a sweeter bacon note. Eric, your nose is insane. It's got like yeah, caramelized bacon type of deal. I can. I it's can like a little bit of umami. That caramelized part. <clears throat> yeah. I think it's the smoky. That's it's the smoked vibe of it that gives you the uh, meat flavor. Because I can get like almost like a. Uh, well, let me taste it first. Hold on. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I get it, it on the. I, I get it on the taste too. This one follows the mm. nose for me quite a bit. It has this umami. Uh, man, maybe meat it's just kind of vibe. Yeah, it has like this grilled meat type of vibe on it where it starts off and I get this honey, um, acidic, bright flavor right mm. on right up front. And then that settles into this meaty umami flavor in the middle. And then it kind of dies down and it has this little bit of almost pepper that sits in the back middle of your tongue for, you know, 20 to 30 seconds after enjoying it. Is there a fruit in this? Um, I definitely get like this acidic note that I think they're attributing to pear. It's like this bright acidity, citrusy type of thing that comes right up front really fast, but it dies down real quick for me. I don't know. I feel like pear is pretty mellow. If it was that, if it, if I was looking for something more acidic, I'd be looking at like a plum. I mean, I I I get pear. Uh, I like I get pear. I perceive no. that as pear yeah. quite a lot. It's just a little bit brighter. It's a very ripe, bright pear. Yeah, maybe I haven't had pears in a while. It tastes like I remember pear. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when's the last time you got a, had a pear there, Anthony? The thing is, I've eaten so many pears that it's just like cemented in my memory. Huh? There was a time when people would eat apples and I would be like, no, pears are better. Mm. I'm going to eat pears. I and will I say, it's, apples are pears. so weird for me, too. I would say that generally... Pears are better than apples unless you have the right apple. You know what a pear never does to you? It never makes you feel like you're chewing on styrofoam. You never have to That's cry That's after fair. you bite into yeah. one. That's fair. It's always the same, or it's really mushy, and then you're like, oops. Is anybody else getting like a tannin, almost like wine-esque experience on the after? <gasps> My life. My beautiful life. <laughs> mm. Behold. Food. Where I, behold, how I will get all of my calories today. Is that because corn and beans? I did not have enough protein. Is Thank there you. corn and beans in there? There's corn, there is beans, there is avocado, avocado, there is turkey, there is a bare amount of rice so that I can eat my carbs as well. Delicious. I am very yeah, happy. Looks really nice. Huh? Mm-hmm. But 
I get a little bit of tannins maybe on the tail end. Yeah. But it tastes less like tannins and more like bitter grapes, like bitter grape skin. Yeah. Right. I might the, see what you mean. It definitely right doesn't remind the, me of wine, but maybe grape. Wow, we can see his room now. Ah. Shut up! <laughs> you don't get to say that to me. Cinematic lighting. You don't get to say that to me. I didn't know you had lights in your rooms. You're <laughs> stupid. You're bum. <laughs> you big poopy uh, pants. Don't make fun of my room. You don't even know what it looks fun. like. It's just always so dark. <laughs> it is usually dark. Sorry, guys. It's not that I, I like think it's it, a style. Like, it's just that, like, I haven't automated the lights yet because I also have, like, two lights here that, like, I need to get on um, the Hue light system. Ah, uh, yeah. And then I still have to Matt, get rid you, of these uh, chairs. A whole lot of stuff. If yeah. you come over anytime soon, I could give you, like, 20 Hue lights. 20 Hue lights? Like the bulb? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Oh, I had, uh, yeah, that. <laughs> because uh, this house has like miniature lights and these other weird lights, and, and you it's can't like use okay. any of them. <laughs> yeah, we got all these old hue lights. We've used up every one of them that we can. So well, and, well, I have to probably figure out a time <laughs> to visit you guys within this year anyway, because I feel like I need to make the time to like see you guys once a year. Yeah, oh, we yeah. have to. We have to. Do and something. we discovered it's only like ninety bucks to come to Asheville. It's 90 bucks to come to Asheville? Yes, or y'all can no. come to Back India. and forth. <laughs> Eric's like, oh, you guys can come to Atlanta. <laughs> India. India. I said or India. Or we can come to India. Oh my so, God. so here's the thing. He, so, no. Because, <laughs> because money is a thing, Eric. That's fair. It, it is a thing. I I Fair. would honestly I would go if I was like if I had the PTO and the money I would totally go. That's fair. Like it's it's not even like a question. I'd be like, well, I I got I'm gonna I gotta make my way out there. It is honestly, it is also one of the scariest places that I can think of in terms of my head, like my head cannon. But I'd go for you. <laughs> And I know I it's not like a terribly scary place. I know, yeah. like I've heard it is if you try to drive. Through yeah, a city. I oh. wouldn't drive there yourself, from what I've heard. But as far as like safety concerns, at least from all of my family now, who's there and who's been there so many times, they're like, nah. People who visit there, foreigners, they're treated like royalty. It's like built into their culture. In a lot of ways, mm. like you're supposed to treat your visitors as if they are, you know, God descended in a lot of ways. I mean, they were literally still ruled by the uh, by Britain, like in the 50s. Yeah. yeah. Not long ago. They have barely been free. That's a, that's a blip culture wise and culture uh, development. Yeah. yeah. It's like no time at all. But that being said. The internet has accelerated a lot of cultural expectations in oh, terms 100%. of like uh, just general growth. Because you, if you think about it, we've adapted to technology at a rate that is unprecedented to any form of stimulus for humankind. That being said, we are still very slow in comparison. There are things that we do now that are a direct correlation of us processing it badly. Like him. Mm-hmm. So anyway, <laughs> Matt, walk me through these whiskeys real quick. Man, like, me, like how? Me, how you. Like, how do you feel about this? How do like, I feel? We so, were talking before the podcast about we how mad shit Laviar has kind of <laughs> failed us, right? Like, out of the twenty-one different or twenty different twenty-ish different whiskeys <laughs> that we've had from Flaviar. We've mm-hmm. essentially had three winners, right? True. We've had three whiskeys where we were like, holy crap. There's That's either mad potential here mm-hmm. or this whiskey is it. Like this changes the game, you mm-hmm. know? And we have stuff like the Frey Ranch. We have 
the Star Word, but not the uh, not the uh, the Nova, not the Nova. Yes, uh, the, the Solera, the Solera, right? And we're looking at these things, and we're like, okay, we we don't have too much value here yet. And then we get on and we have these 11, three whiskeys. 12, and 13, guys. Right, which just to, just to sum it up for some of our audience, that's the Silky Irish Whiskey, which is a peated, uh, smoked Irish whiskey with peat. Then we have the Sonoma Distilling Company, which has done the Cherrywood Smoked Rye, and the Locklea Distilling Company that has done a barley single. Right? Mm-hmm. So... Yep. So now, take take me through your ratings. What would you pay for these whiskeys? Give me the breakdown. Here. So, like it, like Eric said, we talked a lot of mad shit before we got on this podcast about about this box. Um, and then Flaviar decided to serve the top three versions of a Irish whiskey, a rye. And a single malt that I've ever had. So, question: Before you continue, does this rye beat the Frey Ranch rye for you? No, absolutely not. It's okay, great, okay. but it's not. Gonna, it's not Frey Ranch. Yeah. It, look, okay. mm, sir. Fair, fair, fair. <laughs> That's a good fair. question. That's a good question. Yeah, That's I just wanted question. to you know bridge the gap there. For sure, for sure. Um, so let's start with the silky. I am in love with that. That's great. Like I love the the overtone of the peat along with the chocolate. I love that it's it's fruity and like very smooth in comparison to any other Irish uh, whiskey I've had. Like across the board, it's just it's classy, man, and it's tasty. It's classy and it's tasty. I, I don't have anything else to say about it. It's so good. Um, I would pay 70 bucks for that Uh, actually you know what no i'd pay like a hundred dollars for that okay yeah and what would you rate it i'd give that a six okay yeah i'd give that a six uh you know what what was the fray ranch i think you put the fray ranch at a seven if i remember correctly i would put this at a a 6.5 then it's like it is so close i would put this at a 6.5 it is so close. Let me let me find. While he was finding that, let me go you ahead and move put on the Frey Ranch one. at a greater than seven. Greater than seven. Okay. Yeah. So I'll put this at a six point five. I, I stick by six point five. Okay. Um, the Sonoma. Uh, honestly, I was very confused by it off the nose because I was like, "Why? Where's the vanilla?" And then with enough time, I found it. After finding it. I still think that it's a great whiskey. That being said, I was just very confused for a bit. Hold on. Let me go ahead and taste it real quick again, just to make sure that I remember. But the confusion. It is. It's really good, guys. (laughs) It's really good, too. Um yeah, back to back. There's the smokiness. There's that uh, burn from the rye. There's that apricot that we kind of confused as raisins from before that kind of makes it feel as if you're drinking a bowl of cereal milk down, which is awesome. Like that kind of like mouthfeel. I would give this a six and I would pay 80 bucks for this. Okay. Looking at that bottle, I feel like I might be paying more, but <laughs> it just it just seems classier. I don't know. And then finally, the Locklea uh, distilling barley single malt. This is probably the least impressive to me. Um, that's not to say that it's not great tasting. It's just that I feel like the pear is a weak pairing with <laughs> weak pairing <laughs> uh i feel like the pair is not a very um it's not a very prominent uh con- contributor to the experience 
yes, I get that uh, that tart taste from like a fruit being included in the process, but I don't feel as if I can point to it and say, oh, yeah, that's definitely pear. And I don't want whenever fruits included, I don't want to be like, oh, I don't know what that is that I, I can't point a finger at it. If if it's supposed to be like the top thing that's coming off of the top of this whiskey in terms of flavor, I don't want to be able to say, oh, the wine feature of it is very prominent. I want to be able to say, oh, that's like that's sweet interesting and then be like oh that that aftertaste is kind of interesting as well so i would give this a four actually let me taste it again hold on let me taste it again let me let me me try this sure four point five it's close it's just like it has that initial clash of what I feel is um, with uh, Irish whiskey, right? No, scotch. It has that initial clash of, of like a scotch whiskey where like there's that weird little undercurrent of funky that you taste and that it kind of always throws me. So for that, it's a 4.5. It's really good, but it's not my good, if that makes any sense. Like this, what this gotcha. isn't my flavor palette. Um, so four point five, I'd pay, I'd pay forty bucks for it. Um, that's three. That's okay. three. Anthony, walk us through it. What do you think? Oh, we're gonna go backwards. <clears throat> okay, starting with number twelve. Oh, oh god, I was like, I was like, Sonoma. The one we were just talking about. Wait, no, wait. Number number twelve, number thirteen. You mean by backwards? Son of a bitch! <laughs> I just wrote all over the wrong page. Anthony. Oh, no. <laughs> Anthony. Oh shit! <laughs> fuck. Oh, fuck. You'll just have to do it backwards. It's okay. All right, all right, all right. Well, I'm just correcting some things. Uh, let me put a um. Please Oxo hold Thorpe thirteen well. right here. Anthony solves his. Well, no, that's not d- really dyslexia, is it? Whenever you try to do things in reverse order, but you. Is that a thing? For I don't know, dyslexia? but I did discover that I am dyslexic. I did not realize. I'm, that does not surprise me. <laughs> yeah. I am also. So, I mean, it's like. Yeah. yeah. It, it varies. It ver- or, Sorry, the degree of dyslexia varies, like how bad it is. Welcome. Um, the robot mountain man segment of the podcast. <laughs> robot mountain man. Robot, robot mountain man. man. <laughs> Am I back? It looks like I'm okay. You're back. Now. You're good. Yeah, You're good. You, are. Yeah. you are. I'll start monitoring my, uh, my basically my heartbeat of my internets. The- <laughs> so I know when to shut up. Um, the- okay. Flipping between pages. Uh, my initial thought for the Locklea. Uh, the single malt Scotch whiskey is uh, that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> so, wow, I I was writing on the wrong page for a while. <laughs> I forgot that Anthony's rating system has changed since the last. Yeah, episode. yeah, yeah. We have it. Eh, eh. Mm. <laughs> mm. That's good. Eh. Oh, yeah. oh. Eh. I don't feel it. Eric. Don't good. do this, Anthony. <laughs> Don't don't hear what he's saying and make changes to your rating. You had three <laughs> things. You had eh. Mm. Those were just and the first that's few. Good. I need like ten reactions oh, for all God, ten fuck. levels. I can't. Right? Like, I, don't I, can't know. I can't do with you. You have to have the uh, No. No. <laughs> no, no. It's all natural. You either get it's numbers or you get three. I can't do this. It's like I can't pay attention and you keep uh, on throwing random noises at me. I'm just saying one day the funny Matt, thing is when we get super this... big, we're gonna have an entire website dedicated to Anthony's reactions. <laughs> just just well, random so, sound bits. <laughs> what's really good though is I, I might have written on both pages on accident, but I said that's pretty good twice. Wow. For the same one. So it's definitely that's pretty good. Um, 
what I really like about it is that I get that mash note on the nose and in on the tongue, kind of like a white dog. Um, hard smell to know if you haven't had like a white dog or been at a distillery, but it's just it's really hearty. Kind of smells like bread being baked, but it, a very specialty bread. So it smells uh, like freedom. It does actually. It smells um, like freedom. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's uh. Also, I caught the eight. Wait, no, that's a different one. I'm so confused. Anyways, uh, I gave it a five and a half. Yeah, five point five. I that's like 13. it, but there's um thirteen. That's number thirteen. Yeah. Okay. I like it, but there is a little bit of a taste that I'm not a fan of. But is it's at the good. beginning or at the end? At the end. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I think. I think I've learned that Anthony doesn't like bitter, lingering aftertaste in general. He really wants nope. that finish to be like either Polished. super clean mm-hmm. or much more on the tasty sweeter mm. side like it's either got to be tasty and savory or sweet it can't be bitter it's either neat or neat or sweet not 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 dirty it could also be tasty i think i've had them try different whiskeys at my place where the finish is either like cinnamon or oh. something like that or a little bit spicier or umami or but mm-hmm. like it can't be bitter you can't you have to avoid bitter notes the in the end. flavor palette, interesting. With Anthony, he's not a, he's a not a bitter guy. He's not a bitter guy. Yeah, I've got that DNA thing. Actually, that's like a. I just took a DNA. It test. is a thing. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there's like a correlation. There. Just, sure. There's a. I think it's like on the 23 and Me like uh, list of things where it's like cannot stand bitterness as much as others. Um. Mm. That, that wouldn't I'm dropping surprise me, honestly. So many frames right now. Due to network lag, of course. Anyways. Um so to number twelve. Done? Smells Wait, great. What would you what would you pay for that one? Ah crap. Nothing. Uh just kidding. Um not the nothing. You gave it a I'm four. just kidding. No, a five. I gave it a five point five. Oh. Would you it's could probably, give it a daily drink? Hmm. Is it a daily driver? I don't know. It. I. I. I respect it, but I don't know. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Maybe. Moving Hard on. Hard to say. No worries. Probably. You come back to it later. I'd pay but... like fifty bucks for it. Okay. I think. Um. For number twelve, the cinema. Cinema. I'm gonna take it to the cinema. Uh. Wow. It smells great. Wow. I caught the apricot on the nose, so that gives it bonus points. Uh, it's quite good. So I give that one a five. A five? Yeah. Okay. Huh? Yeah. This was okay. the Probably. Sonoma, right? This is Sonoma. Yeah, the Sonoma. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's really like. And what would joke. you what would you pay for it? Probably like forty bucks, maybe forty five. Um. And then the last one, the silky. Um, wait a second. The best part about the silky is that it is silky, because like it's smooth and oily, which is fantastic. Oh, I forgot to give my actual. Wait, oh crap. Anthony, Sorry, what is happening, second. dude? <laughs> hmm. I had to retaste the the first two as well. Hmm. Yeah, so that summer twelve is like a hmm. Yeah, hmm. it yeah. is. Hmm. 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 Yeah. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So, and then uh, my rating for for eleven, the silky is a hmm, very good. Okay. Hmm, yeah. very you, good. You got okay, and okay. it's got good peat. It's a really good Pete. Um, easily a six out of ten. Okay. 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 Probably pay like sixty three bucks for that one. 
You're not going to take us on your flavor journey with this one? Oh, uh, well, I can't remember. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, okay. the smell is really good. A, a really great peaty smell. Uh, I don't think I actually pick up the apple. Really? Mm. Huh. I feel like apple hits it's- you in the face at the front. I didn't get it at the beginning either, Anthony, but I did. I do feel like I sank into it. Like I was like, "Oh, this is a juicy baby." I just got a lot of peat, maybe some smoke, but not enough. It's mostly peat. Like if this actually delivered on the smoky feeling aftertaste, it gets close, but not quite <laughs> there. I'd be really happy about it because I haven't had a. A whiskey like that and forever mm. where it just feels like you know that smell like your clothes you smell them and they smell like smoke because you're on a, around a fire yep some whiskeys can give you that like taste and like after feeling in your mouth and this doesn't it almost hits it but it doesn't but yeah i give this one a six out of ten i think i already said that but we backtracked a little bit because i kind of skipped over everything and then you'd pay about sixty three dollars for it. Yeah. I think uh, the silky is like one of those things where you could put it into a flask and you'd be like, Oh man, I'd come back to this like once every two weeks and be like, Oh, this is tasty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, overall I think all of these are good and much better than most of the Flaviar things that we've had. Yeah. But um none of them are like insane. They're all just good. They're all they're all yep. better than average. For sure. I I think that segues perfectly into my point. This definitely raises the bar for flavor. For sure. The fact that we have things like these three in the same vein as the, you know, things like, like the, these three, the Frey Ranch, and we have that with, you know, this, uh, the JJ this- Corey or, or, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. Or and the, things uh, like that, or like or the, the black word, whatever. <laughs> right, like they're of a different quality. Mm-hmm. These For three sure. whiskeys are all super solid. They're all super interesting, right? Super good. And so the way I'm gonna I'm gonna go through this, I'm gonna go in the reverse order as well to keep it easy, but also because I think it goes in ascending order. So, for the Locklea Distilling Company's barley single malt. I would give that a four. I think there's a lot of interesting things about this. I love the pair up front. I think it's smooth, but I think it has a quickness to it that I'm not a fond of. I want to see it more staying power. I want to see something vibrant up front followed by a smoothness that tapers into something more flourishing. Yep. This really does have like this smooth citrusy pear note up front with a sweetness. And then it kind of dies down and it's just subtle, <laughs> right? This whiskey, when I was going through and retasting and things like that, kind of got lost in the mix, right? Like it doesn't have the power to jump out when I'm trying all of the whiskeys back and forth and things like that. Kind of dies and goes into the mix, right it has a peatiness and a smokiness that i like it has a pear note that i like but i want more out of it right it's it's one step below that daily drinker for me for sure then we get to the sonoma distilling cherrywood smoked rye i like it it's fun it's Mm -hmm. sweet Raisin brandy, you know, it reminds me of this cereal. I think it's a little too sweet for me. And I think it doesn't quite have the rye note in it that I want. It has a little bit of that mealish flavor to it, but it doesn't punch me in the face with rye. And sometimes I want to like feel like I went 10 rounds with Mike Tyson and this didn't do it. You know, it's a little bit of a mask. It's just just the barest amount. (laughs) And then we get to my favorite of the group, which is definitely the Silky Irish Rye, which is 
dynamic. It has these multiple different pieces to it. It has dark chocolate, one of my favorite flavor profiles in whiskey. And you have a definite beginning, middle, and end with some staying power. That spicy note stays on your tongue for a little bit longer than the other two whiskeys. It really has this like punch to it that is super nice. And so I give the Locklea mm -hmm. a nice four. I give the Sonoma right around a 4.5. I give the Silky a six. Yay! The Silky could definitely sit right above my daily drinkers for Silky sure. Fucks. I think it's more dynamic as an Irish whiskey <laughs> than something like a Redbreast 12. And I think it has like some staying power that a lot of other fives don't have, right? Like a lot of five whiskeys for me, they don't have this dynamic journey through this beginning, middle and end. And this really has that. And it has a lot of the flavors that I like while it's doing it. Not a lot of off notes. This mm -hmm. is one where if it just had a little bit more of each phase, it would start to push in to my higher bracket range of like the sevens, you know, mm -hmm. but. Uh, hey, yeah. uh, so Eric, are you a, a fan of that song? Feel nothing by health. Not What's, entirely. Where's, where's this going? <laughs> He was talking about needing, you know, sometimes to just get punched in the face by like Mike Mike Tyson. <laughs> I oh. guess this is going to be that. I think I've played this song for you guys before. Oh, God. It's like, oh no! Like punch me in the face, so I feel something. Oh, <laughs> like, oh no! Hopefully, well, this I, doesn't I assault think, our listeners. I don't know if we can play this on the stream. Pretty sure but, it's. Copyrighted. I'm not playing it. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Send it to us. <laughs> I, I, I'm quite aware that you shouldn't just do that. I was like, oh, no. Oh, this episode no. has been thrown out. <laughs> what? No, yeah. Here's a link to the song. So, gotcha. Or I guess that doesn't send to everybody, does you it? You want to know it's the fine. craziest thing? I can uh, I can send it to everybody. Um, mm. I did it. Too late. Oh, I only did it to YouTube, actually. No, I yeah, 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 yeah. I, I did it. Yeah, you know what's which, crazy, though, yeah. for my rating, is that it is inversely proportional to the price, which is the Silky sits right at $40. No shot. Right? Phenomenal. $40 for an Irish whiskey that gives Buy you a journey. Like, what are we talking about? What are you talking about? This is 40? amazing for the price. Go out and buy the Silky people like <laughs> Phenomenal. Holy the weird thing is, every now and then when I smell the silky, on that first sniff, I smell like firecrackers or fireworks. Yeah, it, the smoked peat comes out on the nose. It's smoky. It's hot. It's spicy. It, it, you know, it gets in your pants on a long night like shit. It's just a great whiskey. So then we have the Sonoma Distilling Company. The cherry wood smoked rye sitting right around the $50 price point. Not bad for a 4.5 to 6, depending on who yeah. you ask here. You know, that's not bad. That's pretty good. I was going to pay 60 for it. <clears throat> yeah, $50 price range. <clears throat> also, a bargain. Hmm. Then we have the Locklea Distilling Company, which I think sits right around $70, which no. is... More no. than what I think everybody here would pay for it. No. Making it probably the worst deal out of the three. Also the lowest sure. average out of the three for us. How does that happen? Guys, let's be real. We're not the only people who have taste, right? 100%. And I get that, like, this is an art. And in any expression of art, you have people who have differing, uh, I don't know, palettes, I guess. I don't see, and maybe it's just me. Maybe, maybe, or actually, maybe it's just us. I don't see how you can serve something like the uh, Sonoma and like be able to say yeah that's 70 dollars. i mean like 
Not the Sonoma, the Locklea. The sorry, the Lock the the, the Locklea. Locklea is seven. The Locklea. <clears throat> I don't see it. Well, like, I get, I get like, I get the fact that like it kind of comes off as like a finer drinking experience because it's, for me, it's almost synonymous with that wine f- feeling of like you sit with that for a while because it's so long lasting and on your tongue. That that doesn't equate to a to a price uptick of like thirty or forty bucks to a competitor who has you by the balls flavor wise. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I I think to some you degree, me, you're right. Me. So we yeah. have to remember, <laughs> the Lockley is the only Scotch out of this group, so it sits in a different category than the other two, uh... for sure. Now, as a Scotch, there are some regulatory things that make Scotches a little bit more expensive, but obviously, you can find Scotches for a cheaper price. But I tend to agree. I don't see how you could go and serve the Locklea and the Silky together, right? The Silky is a peat-smoked Irish whiskey. Guess what? If you like scotches and you like peat flavors, you're going to be looking at things like the Silky and the Locklea together. And I agree with that. I don't know how you could walk into a bar and see Mm -hmm. the Locklea for double the price and choose that over the Silky. Right, like Anthony, where are you coming from on this one? Because like, well, but even Anthony put well, the silky without, above the Locklea. Yeah, right? but but without like without looking into it and remembering that Scotch has like standards, I agree with you, Nat. Like, why would you do that? But then when reading like that, it takes it's more expensive to produce because the ingredients more expensive because you're using barley instead of corn, has a slower aging process. There's okay. more taxes and tariffs. Well, you have to and remember like that, that the Silky is an Irish whiskey, right? Meaning? So, likely we're talking about them both using, it's probably a single malt. It's a blend of Irish whiskeys. So, that's going to be malted and unmalted barley. So, the Irish whiskey always also comes malted. Well, Like a blend of malted and unmalted. So, Irish whiskey gets its flavor from unmalted and malted barley being mixed together. Hmm, okay. A single malt like the Locklea. Locklea is going to be malted barley all the way through, which is the unmalted barley is really where you start to get those shortbread Irish whiskey flavors. Mm-hmm. The malted uh, barley is where you're going to get your single malt flavors. Oh. Oh. Guys, I don't know if you've already finished your Sonoma. It smells divine. I will say the raisin brand sweetness of the Sonoma wow. does smell really good. It smells like a woody, oaky cognac. It's just a, a phenomenal smell. That's so good, guys. That's so good. So, knowing that Sonoma is also cheaper than this competitor i get like totally get that there's like some price regulations that come with scotches so let me not go completely overboard in terms of being dramatic about it i just don't see how you can walk into a bar and know how both of these taste and go with the uh locklear nothing against locklear because honestly out of all the scotches i've had it's a pretty great scotch yeah it's not bad it's not it bad at all. It really just is in the wrong price range. For I think where, so. Like, if this was in the $45 price range, we would definitely see it being competitive with even, these other two whiskeys. Because even right, 50 or 60 man. Yeah, because we could see how different tastes would prefer one of mm-hmm. these three whiskeys over the other, right? Like, if you like Irish whiskeys more and that unmalted shortbread flavors, you're going to like this peated one a little bit more you're gonna like the silky a little bit more if you like something that's a little sweeter something more on the bourbon side something that's a little bit lighter you're gonna like the sonoma a little bit better and then if you like something that's a little meatier umami flavored salty you're Mm. you're you're gonna look at this third one and kind of like that a little bit better but the third one doesn't have enough evolution to make it double the price of the first one no you can probably get umami somewhere else. 
Like I think even the first one has some umami notes yeah. in it from the peat and stuff like and that. The smokiness. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I think this first one, for all of you Scotch lovers out there, like the legendary man. dark silky Irish whiskey is a great yes. foray into the Irish whiskey market as a Scotch lover. It's who actually likes legendary. Peat. It's actually legendary. Yeah. They they were full on like slapdash all good like they got it they made it makes yeah. sense oh whatever but i do love this trio i think this trio has been one of the most Pleasant. divine mm -hmm. trios that we've had from flaviar so far it's really nice that we had three whiskeys both punching in their weight range right like we have to remember that we are kind of cutting hairs here like i could see somebody liking the Locklea enough to pay a little bit more for it and so there's a lot to be said about all three of these whiskeys. All three of these averaged a rating that was right around our daily drinkers. So all three of these could sit around a daily drinker. Now, I think for me, the Silky would be the daily drinker out of this group for me. The Sonoma, while I gave it a rating of five, I do think that I could make this a daily drinker, but I do have daily drinkers that I prefer over it. It would be one of those where I could keep coming back to this bottle, but I don't know that it would really be my daily drinker. But it's not a daily, Harry. Don't say it's a daily drinker if you don't say you're going to take drink it daily. But it's only not a daily drinker because I have others that sit there. That is not a daily. Th then it's not a daily drinker. Be honest with <laughs> be honest with our fans. Harry. Be honest with the people. Be honest with the people. But yeah, it's the, not a daily drinker. Okay, that's fair. Say it. Say it. It's, it's okay. not a daily drinker. The Sonoma would not it's be my daily drinker. It is fantastic. It is a gift. Yeah. It is a fantastic <laughs> gift. Like if I gave this to friends who I was like, "Oh, are you into are you into whiskey?" Hands down, if you hand this to them and they taste it, they're gonna be like, "Where did you get this? Like, yeah. how much did this cost? Like, what are you talking about?" The Forty. I told you don't spend no more than fifty bucks at my party. Why are you bringing me a two hundred dollar bottle? Fifty dollars, my dude. Easy. Yeah. So good. Great choice. The um, the Locklea wouldn't be a daily drinker, but the Silky, daily drinker material. And for 40 bucks, mm. that's a steal. I think if anything else, go try the Silky for $40. There's not a lot in that price range that hits that hard. It's it's really quite dynamic for a $40 whiskey, for sure. You know what I'm going to do? As soon as I start, as soon as I get rid of these chairs, anybody who wants to buy some chairs in the Houston area, you let me know. Um, but as soon as I get rid of these chairs, I have that shelf right over here, right? And it has some shelves like all the way up there. I'm going to put all of my daily drinkers up there to be, to be like, no, it's a daily drinker because I put it on the shelf and no matter what it has, ac I have access to it 24 seven whenever I'm in this room and I'm in this room all the time. I was about to say, what I want to do <laughs> is I want to move this camera view onto this side over here. So it's oh, looking man. this way. I want to mm -hmm. take this wall, put up some shelves, things like that, mm -hmm. put a bunch of whiskey on them, and a neon sign that says Tap Haven. Tap Haven. Or you could just say Daily Drinker. Ah, uh, Tap Haven sounds cooler, okay. though. Okay, you right, you right, you right, <laughs> you right, you right. Matt, Matt, can that shelf system handle that much weight? It looks like it's only got <laughs> I was about to say there's... There's no weight on it, and it looks like it's sagging already. It's fine, guys. It's fine. <laughs> Trust me. It's fine. He's going to put, like, three bottles on fell. it, and it, then it's it going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you see that top shelf? It's, like, 45 degrees already. Okay, it's only so, got two struts. Okay, so bear with me. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that'll it'll sit on that. So I'll figure <laughs> something out, though. Don't worry. Fair. Fair. Oh, man. Okay. Well, yeah, three nice, awesome whiskeys. What have y'all? What have y'all been playing this week? How, how, <sighs> what have y'all been doing game wise? Can I start because my story is very short? Go Fantastic. for it. Fantastic. Okay. So I've probably talked about this game at some point in time, just because okay. I was like, "Oh, I'm interested in playing it. it looks good. I've heard great things." Okay. Um, Co went on to his stream and basically like. Uh, sang praise about it. Um, Prince of Persia 
Oh, yeah. The, and the secret, is it the Lost Crown or the Secret Crown? Hold on. Lost Crown. Yep. Guys, you want to talk about a game that's like a true successor to the Metroidvania lineage? Yeah. I mean, the it combos looks are there. Phenomenal. It looks gorgeous. So, the reason why I'm saying it looks not like I'm play, like it it looks this way and it plays phenomenally. It looks like it plays phenomenally. I wasn't able to play it over this weekend. I bought it Friday at six o'clock in the afternoon. Oh no. And this game requires you to have USB uh, sorry, Ubisoft connect. So I tried to log into my U- Ubisoft account. It's been two fa- two factor authenticated locked. So I send in a support ticket to get it reset. They send me a link to go ahead and start the process of verifying that I am the owner of this account. The the link immediately breaks. I click on it and it immediately says this link is no uh, it has expired and it is no longer uh, valid. Oh my god. I try to get on the phone with somebody. They're all gone. They're gone for the weekend, guys. How did Ubisoft screw... So, to, just for reference, people, by the way, because I'm looking at this game right mm-hmm. now, this game's beta was so much fun. Um, so I was really excited for it to come out. I haven't played it yet. But it is on my list. It has a mixed rating, and I've, I'm just perusing through some of these, and it's every single one is Ubisoft online save account related yep. so far that is a negative review which is just unbelievable it's so disappointing it's so disappointing because guys i've watched this game get played like from like just from jump uh, a friend of ours you might remember him jason um he started playing it around the same time i bought it and he was like dude you want to just like jump in the stream and watch me play like the first like a few hours like i won't spoil i'll try not to spoil anything but i was like dude you're telling me to go ahead and watch the first few hours of course you're going to spoil something <laughs> i watched it anyway um and it looked great like you basically jump into the game after the initial like uh tutorial and it's literally like, hey, jump into the dungeon and it's completely open world. You can go to any of the branches and just go. And like they're fully accessible, but you cannot make uh, progress without getting the full suite of your powers, pretty much. And the story is very interesting. I won't spoil it here because I feel like every single uh, iteration of Prince of Persia has something, some new way or iteration to mess with time. Yeah. And this one is cool. Okay. Like, it's one that, like, it makes sense because in the world that we live in and the media that's being created, of course, they would go this route because they haven't done it yet. But very cool. And And I saw that in the first three hours. Like, the game is fantastic. If you have time, please go out and play the game. The, the creators did an incredible job. I already know they did an incredible job. The yeah. only bad part is the fact Ubisoft. that it's, it's connected with Ubisoft, and Ubisoft has shot this thing in the foot. Yeah, that's just so unfortunate. Ridiculous. So unfortunate. Stop. Yeah, dude, for sure. Stop killing games. Stop. Oh! No, no, no. That's something else. Ignore that for now. Okay. Um, you can't shift enter in the chat. Good to know. <laughs> One last thing before I go ahead and give up my spot because that's literally all I have. I haven't okay. really been able to do anything else. The new uh, Space Marine game is coming out, and I've heard great things. Like story wise and just like uh, gameplay wise, I've heard good things. Like it's like AAA story based game that wants to go ahead and show you big explosions and have you do big crazy shit. Um, they have a multiplayer game. Uh, game mode that looks like it won't survive long but like there's going to be some people who are really into it but the game looks good like real like gears of war level kind of good like first gears of war level kind of good very impressed looking forward to it i don't know if it's already out but 
If it is, I will probably be buying that for the weekend. Nice. But that's me. Yeah, okay. that's what I've been playing. Anthony, what have, what have you been up to this week? Well, I thought I only played one game, but I guess technically I've played two. Oh, okay. So thanks to Eric last week, I checked <coughs> out RuneScape 3, uh, Iron yeah. Man, which was like, I got like... Don't make me a, sign off on this goddamn podcast, yeah. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> I got like a day and a half into that, or like not like a day and a half, but like a day and a half after starting it, I was just like... This is weird and very cluttered and a lot going on and just kind of strange and it's and then I texted Eric I was like did you do RuneScape three or old school RuneScape he's like old school <laughs> I was like okay yeah because yeah. the RuneScape three kind of sucks yeah um, it's weird it's it's such a weird and it, it, and here's the thing because now of course that I talked about RuneScape and stuff like that. I've been getting all the videos. So I've been like researching and like watching video, having videos on, on my second monitor. And it is such an interesting development of how they got to RuneScape three and that whole process and their design philosophy and their choices and things like that. But I think every MMO kind of goes down this route of trying to make things fresh and different and they keep iterating on freshness and different stuff instead of focusing on what they do really well. And at some point, it morphs into so many different systems and so many different things stacking on top of each other that it makes it really hard to like see how you got there, to see where the problems are and it causes this cluttered kind of mess in the same sense as something like Retail WoW or RuneScape 3 or, you know, any game that's been around for as long as those behemoths had the EverQuest, right? Like is still releasing expansions. Destiny. And you go into log into EverQuest and you see a hundred different systems all in trying to intermingle, but all doing bad at it because like, how are you going to keep track of an old code base that is millions of lines of code that all have to interact nicely and have a nice user experience? Like that's, they're making it hard for themselves. Yeah, like the crazy thing they did for RuneScape 3 is that you start off in the brand new person town called Lumbridge. And... In original RuneScape, old school RuneScape, it's a quaint little town outside of a castle with very minimal stuff, and it feels very natural, and it just has everything you need as a newcomer. And then in RuneScape 3, they stuff a bunch of other stuff into it, like a market and other weird things, and it's just like... Bloated. It's out of place. Yeah, it it just doesn't make sense. It's like someone remixed the original game, and it's just weird. But yeah, so I switched to old school RuneScape, which has been nice. It's definitely like true to the original, and um, it's very great for just a what is it? Uh, Brain cycle filler. So like, I have a really hard time brushing my teeth for the full two minutes, and my brush toothbrush will like vibrate every 30 seconds and then turn off well the other day i was like i had runescape in one hand and brushing my teeth in the other and i brushed my teeth the whole way through thanks to the game distracting me from getting distract distracted so yeah i don't that's been kind of neat i don't think there's any other game on the market that is like runescape and i i tried to think about this like pretty thoroughly in the sense that it is a genre almost in and of itself because it doesn't play or feel like an MMORPG. And it doesn't play and feel like a simple clicker. And the way that I kind of thought about it in my head is that I think it's one of the first games that has such a breadth of options based on how much you want to pay attention to the game. 
And that is the thing over there, because that's, I'll, I'll just be queen. Uh, that is the game that I've been playing all week. It's kind of stolen my week from me. And so to kind of jump on this topic as like the game that I've been playing has been old school RuneScape. And I can talk a little bit about a few of the different <gasps> things that I have found interesting Matt, about you it. you never even Nat, played the game. Yeah, that Nat might be like, ah! Ah! But one of the things that this game does that I don't think is actually done in any other game, like full stop, I don't think there's another game on the market that does this well. It has a an option in the game that the developers tweak and monitor that is your attention. It is the amount of effort you want to spend on the game. Do you want it to feel like freaking Osu where you're clicking a thousand times a minute? Guess what? There are things you can do in RuneScape that feel like that. Do you want to be able to click once every 15 minutes and watch a movie on the side? Awesome. RuneScape has something for that. Do you it's want been really in between? You got it. RuneScape's got it. And that's it's cool. been really great for my wife and I watching because Ash started playing it too. Um, and we're... I'm rewatching. She's watching for the first time Smallville, the Superman CW series. Yeah. And they go back and forth between having like really good episodes and insanely cringy, awful episodes. <laughs> and so we're like sitting there hoping for a cringy episode so that we can pull out RuneScape and chop some wood and <laughs> be distracted from the secondhand embarrassment that the show is getting. <laughs> yeah. But and yeah, like, it's been good. And I can't believe the mobile experience. The mobile is experience actually, is surprisingly awesome. And yeah. like, here's the thing. A lot of people watch RuneScape. They look up RuneScape. They see RuneScape. And what they see is something that's like click. And then you watch two characters swing their sword every 10 seconds. And you're like, this is boring as shit. But what you don't see, what, what uh, trailers or watching somebody play always doesn't show you is this attention dial that they can essentially tweak based on what you want to do, right? And it allows you to have a side activity or a main activity or an AFK activity at any point. Yeah. Oh, sorry, you just reminded me. So um, when, when we were originally playing, I think we were like 13 years old, maybe younger than that even. And eventually around 13, I gave up on the game because I learned about input output in school. And I was like, this game is input output. Like I'm not doing anything. And that's because I was like fishing, trying to get to 99 and you're barely doing anything. Like yeah. it's one of those where you can really be doing something else while you're doing this. But as a teenager, without YouTube being a big thing and other stuff, you're just like hundred percent focused on that. And it just became boring. So you, you know, you move on to other things, but the funniest thing was my dad was playing and everyone in school knew him because he was like insane at the game. He even knew Zezima. Like if anyone knows old school Zezima, who was like the top player, my, I didn't understand at the time, but my dad would play while working. And also while working, he'd be watching TV and stuff like that. And so like he was in the place where, you know, he had the extra, minor amount of attention to be able to give to something while waiting or being on the phone with someone or whatever it is. Cause it's the game is like a fidget spinner at times, yeah, which is really awesome because it yeah. actually, for a lot of people helps you pay attention to what you're working on or doing. Because if you didn't have something to fidget with, you would start to like daydream or think about something else entirely. Yeah, it is. It is something so cool. The other, so the other thing I'll say you know, on the RuneScape thing because now I I don't know Anthony where you're at, but I, I've kind of I'm like near max on uh, like one skill. Oh, one I skill. Okay. I have got uh, a bunch of quests under my belt. Um, I'm I think my level now I'm sitting at around six hundred total level. Or something like that. 
um, which isn't too high for people that are. I'm at that, 324. Yeah. If for people that like actually play RuneScape, they're like 600 so low, man. Like, look, I know, I know, I'll get there. But <laughs> the um, the other thing that I will say about RuneScape, you have all of these different attention level activities, right? So you can spend as little or as much time, like effort into this game as you want to, which is really cool. It allows for so many dynamic play styles of like doing other things, doing this, doing that. But on the other hand, one thing that RuneScape does so differently from other games that I absolutely love is the quests. I would argue that regardless of what you think about RuneScape, the quests in the game are so well designed in how you have to go about solving them and how you have to go about like executing them that is super cool, engaging, and interesting. <clears throat> and a lot of people are like, oh, I downloaded Rune Light and I have the quest helper and I use the quest helper. And I think the quest helper is great. Use the quest helper if you don't care about any of that. But if you want an experience that is really cool, do some of the quests outright, like try to solve them because they are solvable, one. And two, <clears throat> there is so much love and effort put into like the dialogue, the mechanics behind them, how you have to solve them, how you have to figure them out. That is that kind of care is not put into quests. And one of my main goals of doing runescape and like starting runescape now is that they released a new quest line uh it's like wild guthric sleeps or something like that guthric and it is a it is like a grandmaster quest it's like a hundred different parts it'll take you like it is essentially a main quest of some other types of games where you have to have a certain level for some of the things in RuneScape. But this quest line is like a main story from like Skyrim or something like that. Like it's that level of care put into like just a random quest chain that is fairly new in RuneScape. So like Anthony, this quest didn't exist when we last played it. Mm -hmm. This was introduced in like 2022 or something like that. Um, I don't know exactly when, but. Well, yeah, and like to emphasize the right in the very beginning uh like one of the starter uh zone quests ends with you having to solve a cipher yeah right like and that's so crazy i think that you know unfortunately world of warcraft has probably stained the idea of questing to a yeah. lot of people so when you talk about it they are probably glossing over and not even hearing what you're saying because in runescape i haven't ever encountered a single go kill 10 of these uh, quests, you know? Yeah. And everything is unique. Everything has a little story. And there's no, unless you're playing RuneScape 3, old school RuneScape doesn't have any handholding. It doesn't tell you where to go. Yeah. It, I mean, they'll tell you things like, oh, it's to the southeast or whatever. Like, it's over here, you know? And that's just a really cool thing. And they also have elements of... Um, what is it like old text games uh, and yeah, stuff like that where, adventures. yeah. Yeah. Like if I click on something and I click on another thing on accident, I didn't even mean to do it. It will say nothing interesting happens. And it's like, Oh, so like something might've happened if I had the right thing. And so like Eric said, every little quest is actually a great opportunity to do something cool. And there it's not, tedious like wow where you definitely want a guide because who cares about this quest it's like actually this quest is going to feel better if you solve it you like a puzzle yourself yeah and every Internet. quest is an adventure in runescape like it really does like there are a few starter quests that are like teaching you mechanics but once you get past that every single quest feels important to the world like one of the quests for example you go through and they're like, hey, this town over here, plague. Like everybody in it is an 
is, is infected and dying. Like nobody goes in there. And then you go in there and like, we don't get a lot of visitors from the outside. <laughs> like, like, and yeah. you go through this storyline and you figure out this like pseudo political system that this town's going through. And you have to like rescue a girl and like all this type of stuff. And it, it, it's like engaging, interesting, and just fun to go through some of these quests. And it, it's so refreshing because quests like that just don't exist in games right now. And you're getting it in a game that is like, you can look at me every 30 minutes and play me, or you can look at me constantly and play me. You can engage with me however you want. And that is so refreshing in today's market. You know, that is like surprising. Yeah. So I think I just remembered that. So back in the day, RuneScape had a like $5 membership maybe. And the thing that people constantly looked forward to was the like maybe monthly or by or every other week. I don't know what their ca their cadence was, but it was a new quest. Like specifically, you would get a new quest, and every now and then, there'd be a whole new zone too, and many quests, like multiple quests coming with it. But everyone was constantly looking forward to the next quest hoping that they had the right levels for it and the items and that they could do it quickly if they figured it out and stuff like that. So, and so it really, it's funny. It's called RuneScape, but it's more like Questscape. Yeah. And Anthony, just to wrap all this up and like really drive it home for you particularly, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, old school RuneScape, the original RuneScape turned into RuneScape 3. All the characters from there turned into RuneScape 3. Like the old character that me and Anthony had as kids, that doesn't exist anymore. You like, oh. like they, they, they were converted to RuneScape 3 characters. And if you didn't convert it in time, like they got wiped, all that kind of stuff. Old school RuneScape had a, they had a voting thing. They voted. The community said, we want the old school stuff. And the company listened. And now they vote on every new thing that comes out in the game. Guess what? You have to have a super majority and they release it. But guess what? There's an entire team dedicated to only old school RuneScape and making it better and releasing new content for it that didn't exist back in the day. They have continued to just make stuff for that game. Old school RuneScape uses the old systems but keeps releasing stuff. They have voted, they have they have started, and they just recently released the video for their new skill in old school RuneScape. Oh, wow. Which is sailing. So what? they're going to have sailing in old school RuneScape. It is still in the early, early development. I That's Last wild. videos I saw said that it probably won't even be out this year. Right. And we're probably looking at sometime next year, but they're going to have an entire new skill called, called scaling. And a lot of people are like, ah, whatever, whatever. But as a new person who's just getting into old school RuneScape, it seems really exciting. And for somebody like Anthony, they're going to have ship combat. They're going to have PKing on boats. They're going to have quests uh -huh. where you can go through and deliver stuff from port to port. They're going to have different boss encounters and things apparently for like being out in the ocean right on this ship so like That'll just be cool. just the fact that the team is working on stuff like that is super engaging and I'm really start awesome. with a raft yeah yeah <laughs> start with a little dinghy and that, that's you what know, it looks like you have like a small so boat and then it just gets bigger and then it turns into a galleon once you get high enough yeah for now, I'm not so sure about the PKing though, because I, I actually started a hardcore Iron Man, and he's oh, still yeah. hardcore. Yeah. Uh, since I saw that, like as long as you haven't, like I saw that you just get downgraded, I was like, well, why not? Yeah, I thought uh, of, I don't know why I didn't do that. I should have done it, but um, yeah. And, and funnily I, well, enough, I haven't died yet on my Iron Man either. Although I'm still on like the Winter Todd and the Temperus grinds and stuff like that and doing those mini bosses so like there's not a well, lot I'm of risk certain but. i'm just gonna die to winter tot when i like have an internet blip and i disconnect and just stand uh, there and die yeah yeah so i'm probably gonna at least die to just 
nonsense at some point. Yeah. And winter I've accepted that. Yeah, winter Todd is a is the one that's risky. You could start with Tempris and get a lot of your stuff there though to use. I'm already at Winter Todd. I'm just going for it. Oh nice. Yeah. Wait, do I've you have all your stuff a... for Winter Todd? Do you have like the warm clothes and everything? No, I only have gloves and boots. Ooh, I only need... get hit by one or two. Okay. That's good. I get hit by one for cold and then two for like getting actually hit. Did you farm some cakes? Yes, I've been following this guide, um, so I don't have to think much. Nice for like Iron Man efficiency guide. Oh it's, yeah, the Iron Man efficiency like guide is so crazy. Yeah, it'll it'll make you like do things. I haven't been following it, but I've seen it, and I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I I've just been kind of like, ah, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that, and now I'm at Winter Todd until I get my. Um, I'm trying to get that tome. Is what I'm trying to get. Oh, the fire person tome, fire the tome. fire spell tome. Yeah. yeah, that's hard. Yeah, I've gotten everything else though. I have all the equipment, uh, except for the dragon mm. axe, and I'm just trying to get the tome. I've heard you can keep some of the crates and not open them, and they will scale with your levels as you get stronger, and then eventually open them and get a better reward. They will, like but they don't increase your chance of getting the tome. So a lot of people say open them until you get your tome and then save all of them mm. is what I've heard. But I don't know which ones at, at all. It makes sense. I mean, you want the tome. You want yeah, the tome. the tome. The tome is essentially what I'm trying to get. So I don't have to have fire runes for all the non physical stuff. Mm. So it's cool. Stuff. Yeah, the, so the only other thing I wanted to bring up was what I accidentally messaged you guys is called stop killing games. So I might not have heard of this, but in the European European Union, they have this uh, stop killing games thing that they're trying to get a bunch of people to sign. And unfortunately, it's a bad idea because the language for it is just completely wrong. Um, so ideally, what they are after is that it is definitely not OK for a game developer to release a single player game and require online services for you to play it. If they advertise it as a single player game, it should be a single player game. You shouldn't have to log in, have an internet connection. And if someday the company goes on under, you no longer can play that game. Okay. The language for this stop killing games, which if goes into uh, the system will basically be a guide for what lawmakers use to write things is that with this, you would basically like kill things like League of Legends because it's including all games, really. So it's saying that if you make an online multiplayer game, you have to like release your source code and uh, essentially, for especially for like a small developer, if you do make a multiplayer game, uh, all someone would have to do is like there's certain easy attacks where they can kill your game and then they can revive your game and make money off of it themselves while you've been just completely killed as a company Checks and gone out. under. Yeah. So they, they like they'll, because the law would then tell that, tell everyone that because you're going under, you now have to like release your source code so that other people can keep playing the game and host it. Game. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so me, so the three of us could never make an online game without being, definitely under threat of someone just attacking us with ddos and then eventually killing Taking it or something project. like that yeah, mm. yeah. um ah. so it's like it's not the right language for what isn't okay which is the whole i'm selling you a single player game but you have to log in and whatnot um so it's it's really weird and then on top of that Another thing that's come up from people talking about it is that the language really needs to change around buying games and even buying uh, like movies and, and shows online because mo most of the time we aren't buying a game. We are renting a license and give it, getting the right to log in and play this game or log in and watch this show. Like you can buy a movie on Amazon and they have the complete right to take it down, yeah. you know? And so you, it, it, 
instead of purchase, like it, it would be nice if we had laws that say, no, you can't say purchase. You can't say buy. They, they're not actually owning that thing and owning it forever. That's what confuses people. Yeah, You're renting it. It's just a license to use it while it exists. And it yeah. might not exist someday. Yeah, that's so complicated. I think that's so complicated too. It's like it's like one of I I totally agree. We need to ha like open up verbiage for that to be communicated more eloquently. But it's yeah, because it's, so it's hard. hidden in the user license agreements yeah. that no one reads because no one can understand it. And yeah, it's all legalese, right? Like it's it's all hidden behind legal barricades. And the same thing with this too, right? Like the person who's probably behind a lot of like this initiative is probably doing it in arguably good faith too. They're like, we want to be able to make it so that when people have buy these things or access these things, they have access to it forever. Like they have the ability to have this, right? And like in part, that's awesome. But at the same time, like you said, there's probably a lot of verbiage and legal loopholes and legal, like just things that they have to jump through to make this actually do what their intent is versus what it's probably actually doing, right? Yeah. And it, it it's one of those things where, you know, it's difficult right now because the people that are going into law, the people that are covering this type of thing, the people that are specializing it aren't always the people that are understanding or grasping what actually it's needs to result from that. Yeah. And then the people that are actually affected by it are a different group than even that, you know? And, and so... And, and on a, a, it's difficult. It's weird. On a similar vein, I, I just learned that uh, apparently there's a such thing as DVD and Blu-ray rot. So if you have old Blu-rays and DVDs, even if they're not old to you, they might be old from when they were created. You might want to figure out how to rip the data off of those and store it because those physical things deteriorate after like five to ten years. And become Dang, unusable. I did not know that. Yeah, I, me I've, neither. I've heard that that so for because I talked with Kirk about this because he had a huge Blu-ray collection that he ripped onto drives. He was saying that, um, and Kirk's very knowledgeable about these things for the audience. Uh, he was saying that it, it kind of depends. But there was there was a time right around like 2007, 2008, where Blu-ray discs up. made after that are significantly less prone to rot yeah. outside of their like atomic decay rate. And then ones made before that are susceptible to it poop. extremely. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's always good practice to like have backups in general. I think as a, a, a like as all of us being computer savvy people, like you should be backing up anything that's important. If that's Blu-rays, if that's games, if that's whatever that may if be. You download right? it, you, you back it up. Yeah. Period. If it's important, if it's important to you, you, back you should have backups oh. to it. And the, uh, Nat, you reminded me of the stop killing games thing because Ubisoft is the target for like the first initiative because oh, wow. they killed the crew, which was like a massive multiplayer car game. Mm -hmm. But guess what? The crew two exists and the crew three exists. <laughs> and it's been 10 years since the crew came out and their licenses are like up for all the cars that they put in it. So they'd have to pay a ton of money to get those cars back and everyone's playing the crew two and the crew three now because those games actually succeeded for those players they're better games fuck ubisoft man yeah Ugh. garbage <laughs> well, cannot believe it oh so mad about it well on the, i guess on that uh <laughs> somber, somber note, note uh we're gonna be playing more games and we'll have a hopefully 
Next week, Nat, we'll have a fun whiskey to try. If it ever gets shipped to you. Dude, you got to check in on that. Are they even giving it to you? I'm Free sorry. range. I don't see how this is my fault. I'm not saying it is your fault. <laughs> it's just I hope we... I hope we can get it for next week. I'd love to try the Frey Ranch with y'all. So hopefully, audience, next week we'll have a really fun whiskey to try with y'all. But outside of that. It says it's on the way. Perfect. It says perfect. it was delivered. Well, that's not perfect because then that's... you would have had it. Hold, hold the phone. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. It's 564 Windsor Forest Drive. Hold the door. Oh, hold up. Wait a minute. Something <laughs> Got delivered right. next door. Uh oh. Uh-uh. Shipment successfully delivered. Oh, oh no. no. August 12th. Uh, today. That, today. That it's today. probably oh, sitting outside. in your. It better be outside. Probably sitting. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Well, we might have a special, super special surprise for you guys. Well, I mean, next week. Can't do another whiskey. Oh no, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. <laughs> no. So yeah, but speaking of disc rot, let's see. Nope, this one's fine. This one's fine. Yeah, yeah, looks good. Yeah, apparently uh, there was uh, from w- what I've heard about it. I'll, I haven't done any research into it. I'm just going off what uh, what Kirk told me. But yeah, it's not really a thing anymore. Yeah, new. But you Blu-ray might discs. if you have old enough DVDs or Blu-rays, yes. you might have some. Yeah that could rot and so you might want to rip those before yeah. they die and it's apparently right around uh 2006 2007 like <gasps> if you did Blu-ray, he's received it he got it yeah well finally audience next week we will have a super fun whiskey to try with y'all from our favorite one of our favorite distributors for a ranch and so, I guess with that said, we'll see you in the next one. Frey Ranch, here we come! Later, nerds. Bye. Peace.